are you really ready to be a government contractor? When we go into every solicitation effort or every teaming discussion, you need to be able to define and articulate how you are going to win and outperform your peers. When we talk about competitive advantage, we're talking about two things. If a company is not growing, it's dying. Companies that do not learn will not adapt and transform, and they will eventually die and cease to exist. There's a way to do proposals smartly, and I would tell you that most newbies are not doing it effectively. Hire slowly and fire quickly. Welcome to my channel. My name is Dr. Curtis A. Merriweather Jr. And I just want to welcome you to the channel. Now, the purpose of this channel is to educate entrepreneurs through education, consultation, and training support services. The goal here for this channel is to lower your learning curve and accelerate your profitability. Now, we do this by advanced education, lessons learned and just practical experience now this is based on 27 plus years of time within this industry as many of you guys know i got started in government contracting at a very early age i actually started government contracting in high school i didn't know that that was what i was actually doing but i've been in the space for quite some time now i got a great topic for you guys today before i jump into my topic i want you to like I want you to subscribe and I want you to share and definitely feel free to drop some comments below this video. But without further ado, let's jump right into our topic for today. You've seen the title of this video um, when, you, when you clicked onto it. So let's just jump right in. What I want to talk about today is are you really ready to be a government contractor? So, we're going to break down this acronym I've created, especially for this video. We're going to talk about, are you really ready to be a government contractor? So for the very first one, R, research your target market. Now, when I say research your target market, what am I talking about? Um, what are you going to sell to the federal government? Now, Again, a lot of the principles I talk about can be applied to the state, local, but on this particular channel, we focus on the federal government. So when I use the term market research, I'm talking about an organized effort to gather information about a target market and customers. So we know the federal government's composed of a variety of agencies to do a whole host of things. So there's departments, departments have agencies and agencies within those agencies are a list of offices or divisions. So when I'm talking about market research, I'm talking about organizing uh, information gathering, data collection to determine who you want to sell to in the federal space. Now, it's important to know what is being purchased, what is being bought. One of the ways that we're able to look at things the government is purchasing is through NAICS codes, that's the North American Industry Classification System, also called a NAICS, N-A-I-C-S, North American Industry Classification System, or a PSC code. That's a Product and Service Code, or a PSC code. Now, the NAICS code looks at it from an industry basis. The PSC code looks at the same market from a category management perspective. Now, what's important is we need to know who's buying. Now, our market research is going to help us understand who's buying. We're going to understand the department, the agency, and if we do this correctly, we're going to ascertain the office, and you're going to know who your potential prime contractors are going to be if you are using a subcontracting strategy. So for my primes, you're going to be able to delineate who the departments are, the agency, and maybe the office, if you use the things that I teach in, in my curriculum, and you're going to be able to know who, uh, if you're a subcontractor, who your potential prime customers can be. 
they're still going to be government in customers. So government is who we serve. We're either servicing them directly as a prime or indirectly as a sub. So the first R is researching your target market. Let's keep moving. Now, Number one was researching your target market. Now, before I jump into number two, um, I want to just do something very briefly. Now, as many of you guys know, we have the eight-figure government contracting community. Um, you can go to our eight-figure government com, eight-figure govcon uh, website. You can look at our teaching platform. You can go definitely to the store. Now, the month of April is my birthday, so I'm doing something special for the month of April. In the month of April, I'm giving you a coupon code called April 30th, which is when my birthday is, the last day of the month of April. Anything in the store, with one exception, with one exception, we're launching a new course called the Launch Pad Formula. I want to show you how to go from expiring to actually executing in the space. That is the only course in the library that is not going to accept the uh, coupon code. Now, the coupon code is going to give you 30% off for the month of April, April 30th. So we're going to do a 30% off coupon code. That coupon code is going to expire uh, on my birthday, which is April 30th. It's going to expire at 11.59 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So I didn't want to forget that as we get ready to prepare for my birthday celebration. Okay, let's jump into number two. We talked about R. R was researching your target method. Number two, we need to evaluate your strengths and weaknesses based on the opportunity. Number two, which is our E in our really uh, acronym, the E is evaluating strengths and weaknesses based on the opportunity. Now you say, Dr. Kirk, what do you mean evaluating my strengths and my weaknesses? When you look at said opportunity, whether this is an RFP, whether it's an RFQ, there's going to be some things outlined in, in the solicitation. In, in traditional standard government contracting um, organization for, for RFPs, you're going to have section L, which is going to be the, the instructions to the offer for the prime contractor. It's going to be section M, which is going to give the evaluation criteria, and section C, which is going to be the statement of work, performance work statement, or statement of objectives. Those are three different ways that the federal government outlines the requirement, which is a big fancy word for saying the need of the federal government. So whether it's an RFP or RFQ, um, you need to understand that there are going to be some strengths and weaknesses that's going to, that are going to be inherent. So when you read through the documents, you need to be understanding how well you stack up in this opportunity. Every opportunity is going to be slightly different. It's extremely important that you read the entire proposal, but pay special attention at the onset, at the beginning, before you go through your bid, no bid, whether I'm going to go or no go on this opportunity as a prime. It's super important that you look at section L, M, and C first, but also read the entire proposal at least twice i said proposal i mean solicitation at least twice there's going to be some inherent risk whether it's cost plus versus firm fix there's some inherent risk that are going to be inherent in every contract and you need to understand if we understand what our strengths and weaknesses are based on contract type and a whole host of things outlined in section l m and c okay now let's really dig in into what we're talking about about strengths from a from this opportunity perspective, what are you good at? Now, hopefully you are at least good at the core competencies, meaning the things that your company is known for. What is it that your company does? Hopefully you have really, you understand the type of work that you all do. That is first and foremost. Second strength that you may have, maybe the human capital. Maybe it's the team you've assembled within the organization. These are your um, the employees that work for the company. These are the W-2s for the company. Hopefully, you've honed in on the talent base within the company. The, sec the third thing that may be a strength, and these are just a couple examples, it may be some type of proprietary process. What is it that your company does? How do they do what they do? What is the secret sauce? These are some potential strengths that may be um, inherent in the organization. There could be others, but those are just a few. 
Now, your weaknesses, just a few weaknesses. Again, you're going to have to look at the opportunity on a case-by-case -case basis. You put two opportunities up and you assess the company. You're going to have different strengths and weaknesses that are going to vary based on the opportunity, based on the solicitation, how it's outlined. Some weaknesses may be, maybe you don't know the customer. The big, the word we use for that is lack customer intimacy. You do not know the customer and the customer doesn't know you. I don't mean you don't know the customer's name, meaning the person who works in the office, because maybe you have an email address and a phone number, but they don't really know you. They may know your name, but they don't know the organization. They don't know what kind of work product you guys are going to produce. You may not know each other, so you may lack intimacy. Another thing that may be a weakness, again, I'm just giving some examples. Maybe you don't have past performance. Maybe you have past performance, but maybe you don't have past performance with this particular customer. So maybe you've done this kind of work before, but maybe you haven't done it for the agency you want to do work for now, Okay. The most optimal position is to have past performance, but especially past performance with the customer that you're wanting to do work for. Now, past performance will not stop the show. There's ways to mitigate that. I teach that in my courses. Another thing that may be a weakness. Again, these are just examples just to illustrate my point. Maybe you have subcontractor past performance and you don't have prime past performance yet. When you eat, when you kind of, when you kind of uh, do a a a one to one relationship, a company with prime past performance is going to be be viewed a little more heavily, um, a little more favorably than subcontracting past performance. Some of your solicitation documents will even say they want uh, past performance where you have been a prime. Sometimes it's explicit, sometimes it's not. These are the whims of the contracting officer and or the agency you're doing work with. So in a situation like that, yes, past performance is good, but they may want agency specific past performance, meaning you've done this type of work for that agency. That's going to, that's going to be viewed most favorably, but these are all things that all companies have to mitigate. We find ourselves in various places in our business development cycle. And part of your job as CEO is mitigating or doing your best to undergird the weaknesses to the best of your ability so you can put together the best bid your company can put out in hopes of winning. Last but not least, you may be a new organization. Maybe your brand has not been firmly established with the customer yet. Again, I'm just giving a few examples just to kind of drive the point home. What does a strength look like? What does a weakness look like? Now, I need to say this before I move to my next point. A strength can be a weakness, and a weakness can be a strength. For example, what do you mean? A strength could be your large business. That large business is also a weakness. Why is it a weakness, you say, Dr. Kurt? It's a weakness because it may take layers of bureaucracy before you can make a decision. I got to go through layers and layers of management before we can get a decision made. Being small is a weakness, but it's also a strength. Being small... You may not have the cash reserves of one of the large top 100 government contractors that list is published every year, but you have the nimbleness and the agility as a small. So a strength can be a weakness and a weakness can be a strength. Let me keep moving. Let me keep moving. Number three, talking about A and I really, we did the R, we talked about E, now we're at A. You have to assess your competitive advantage. When I say competitive advantage, I say, Dr. Kirk, what are you talking about assessing my competitive advantage? Well, first of all, let's define in very basic terms, what does it mean to have a competitive advantage or what is a competitive advantage? It's as simple as I can make this is how are you going to outperform or beat the competition? Better stated, how you plan to win. When we go into every solicitation effort, or every teaming discussion, you need to be able to define and articulate how you are going to win and outperform your peers. If we're going after proposal, how are you going to stack up against the other primes that are that are bidding? If you're talking about a sub and the and the prime is looking at teammates, how are you going to stand apart from everyone else they're evaluating to give you a slot on the team? So when we talk about competitive advantage, we're talking about two things. Fundamentally, 
How are you going to win work? And where are you going to play? So let me let me break these down. When I talk about how are you going to win work, this is going to be micro purchases. Are these going to be RFP solicitation responses? Are these going to be RFQ or quotes to the customer? Are you winning based on price? These are the two ways you win, either price or being differentiated. Differentiate is a business term we use where it talks about your company's uniqueness, the special sauce. So we win contracts either on price or being unique or being special, being differentiated. Those are all adjectives that are talking about the same thing. So how am I going to win? Number one, we talk about competitive advantage. And then where am I going to play? Am I playing in broad markets or I'm playing what we call narrow or niche markets? When I talk about broad markets, let me give you some core competencies to kind of bring this point home. I want to make this very government contracting centric. Broad market, maybe you're in administrative support services. Maybe you're doing cyber. Maybe you're doing IT. Maybe you're doing transportation and logistics. These are broad markets. Maybe you're doing narrow markets or niche markets. Now, when you do niche markets, I hope, I hope there's uh, some price at there's some price differential. Your niche market should be driving higher prices. Just FYI, just so you know. Now, when I talk about my niche markets or my narrow markets, you're gonna see things like artificial intelligence and machine learning. These are or also think of your niche markets or your narrow markets as emerging markets. So this is gonna be AI machine learning. Everyone today is talking about uh, Copilot and Chat GPT. Those are just two of many uh, artificial intelligence tools or LLMs, okay? You got uh, applied research. This may be your SB, SBIR, STTR, innovation research opportunities. These are uh, emerging tech. You got um, blockchain, specifically maybe smart contracts. You got quantum computing. Again, these are going to drive higher price premiums, and these are going to be more your more specialized services. Now, at some point, all emerging markets become broad. Let me say this again. There was a day where cybersecurity was a niche or a niche, a niche area. That's not the case anymore. It's now considered more of a broader market. There's going to be a day and time where blockchain is going to be a mainstream technology. It's not today. Some would argue with me on that point. It's going to be a day and time where quantum computing is no longer an emerging or niche or narrow market. It's one day be kind of going to become mainstream and be front and center. So recognize that there's cycles. Let me keep moving. I spent too much time on that point already. But number three, you got to assess your competitive advantage. I want to know how you're going to win and where you're going to play. Am I going to win based on price or secret sauce? And it's very hard to it's very hard to do both. Let me be, so be mindful. So I'm gonna do both. Be careful with that. I don't have time in this video to talk about the pros and cons of each one of those uh, approaches. But be very careful when you start talking about combining price and being differentiated. Be careful. Many people don't do it correctly. And then you got to also think about where you're gonna play. You're gonna play in broad markets or niche markets or some combination. Okay. Let me keep moving. I don't want this video to be super, super long. Number four in our really example, our really mnemonic is learn, learn, and learn. You said, Dr. Kurt, what are you talking about? Learn, learn, learn. What am I talking about? You got to become what we call a learning organization. I want you to commit to being a learning organization. You said, what does it mean, Dr. Kurt, to be a learning organization? A learning organization is, by definition, a company that facilitates the learning of, of its members to continuously transform itself, continuous process improvement. They're a learning organization. They want to get better and better. They want to better their best continuously. It's a learning organization. If a company is not growing, it's dying. Let me say this again. If a company is not growing, it is dying. Companies that do not learn will not adapt and transform, and they will eventually die and cease to exist. 
Let me say it again. Companies that do not learn will not adapt and transform and will eventually die and cease to exist. Do you need some examples? I got tons, but I'm going to give you three. Blackberry. R.I.M. Research in Motion. That's the, that was the company. Research in Motion created Blackberry. Apple came along and cleaned Blackberry's clock. Blockbuster. They didn't want to. They didn't want to be a learning organization and continue adapting. Netflix came along. They didn't see Netflix as a threat. Netflix started streaming services and Blockbuster. Blockbuster went goodbye. That coupled with Redbox. Now Redbox is struggling a little bit now. But Redbox and Netflix unseated Blockbuster. Let me give you one more. Circuit City. I can give you another one. Radio Shack. Radio Shack still hobbling along, trying to adapt and uh, you know, overcome. They still working on some stuff. They they got purchased by a, a, a big a big company recently. So we'll see what's gonna happen. But Circuit City, another example. Radio Shack is still trying to find its way. Let me keep moving. Number four was learn, learn, learn. Number five, leverage your resources effectively. Y'all ain't hearing me. Leverage your resources effectively. You say, Dr. Kirk, what do you mean leverage your resources effectively? Let me, I'm going to tell you what I mean. In finance, leverage maximizes or greatly increases returns when used properly. This is why real estate is so powerful. It takes advantage of leverage. This is why margin calls are so powerful. If you use margin and you buy the stock with a little bit of your money and you leverage the return, when it when it works, it works magically. When it doesn't work, it works horribly. So it's either going to maximize your asset or it's going to or it's going to further compound your descent. So leverage your resources effectively. Now, what, what should I be leveraging? You should be leveraging your human resources. You want to obtain the most value from your current employee base and future employees. You want to leverage your finances. You want to do more with less. You need to understand what your rap rate is. Do you understand your costs? Do you understand how to properly apply leverage how, and it makes sense and not accelerate your decline? Poor leverage use accelerates destruction. You got to leverage your social networks to maximize value in your relationships. Remember, government contracting is a game of relationships. See, a lot of you just think, I'm going to go on Sam.gov and put in a bunch of proposals uh, to, to companies that I've never talked to, don't know, organizations, I'm going to win work. Do people win work that way? Yes. Is it effective? Um, I challenge the effectiveness of it because oftentimes it's a race to the bottom but, but that's that's a conversation for a different day there's a way to do proposals smartly and i would tell you that most newbies are not doing it effectively but i'm gonna keep moving technology you got to optimize technology so you complete complete routine tasks more effectively you want to optimize and leverage your training budgets to optimize the employees for maximal contract performance you want to gain more profitability and hopefully you're going to get some economies of scale what do i mean when i talk about economies of scale as i do a job i become more efficient and the work goes up in productivity but my price my profit margin increases and my cost decline growing companies is not that hard in theory i'm going to maximize revenue and i'm going to minimize expense let me say it again growing companies by definition, it's not difficult. It's the maximization of revenue and the minimization of expense. Companies that do that most effectively are the behemoths in the market. They're the, they're the beast in the market. Maximize revenue, minimize expense. And the way I do that is through properly applied leverage and finances and my human resources, and my social networks, and my technologies, and my training budgets, and the list goes on and on and on. We're looking for properly applied leverage. Let me keep moving. Let me keep moving. We're almost done. 
We're almost done. We're coming around the home stretch. Number six, yank the right opportunities to grow, network, recruit, etc. You can keep adding to the list. You got to yank opportunities. You said, now, I'm not using any kind of slurs when I talk about yank. I'm talking about yank the verb by Cambridge Dictionary is to pull something forcefully um, with a quick movement. Yank also means to suddenly remove someone or something. One of my key, one of my key um, things I live by: hire slowly and fire quickly. We say this again: yank, hire slowly, fire quickly. To pull something with force. When you find an opportunity, you gotta yank it, or it might not be that long. You gotta pull it quickly. Bring it close, harness it, cultivate it. You got to yank opportunities. You got you to yank opportunities to grow, prime and subcontracting. We got to do them both. You got to yank financing deals so you can get the capital needs to be met so your company can grow. Most companies don't grow for a few reasons. One of them is capital. Number two, you got to yank recruitment opportunities. You got to recruit alternative finance executives. You got to recruit bankers to work with you. You got to recruit corporate executives. You got to recruit employees, professional partners, your attorneys, your, your lawyers, your proposal managers for, for my smaller companies. You got to yank technologies and figure out how to incorporate them into your fold to be utilized and maximized effectively to drive top line and bottom line revenue growth. You got to yank resale opportunities from the distributors, intellectual property, licensure deals, original equipment manufacturers, value added resellers. You got to source your product needs. You got to just quite frankly, you got to be ABC. You got to always be closing. You think about yanking opportunity, you got to be ABC. Always be closing. Always be closing. As the entrepreneur of your organization, your job is to lead sales. You're selling, comp you're selling employees to come work for you. You're selling your banker to give you more money. You're selling HR to, re to create strong corporate culture. You got to always be closing. Every time they see you, you close it. You're convincing someone why they need to partner with you, either directly or indirectly. That's all I got. Are you really ready to be a government contractor? Playing the game out here, folks. Are you researching your target market? That's our R. Are you evaluating your strengths and your weaknesses? Are you assessing your competitive advantage? Are you learning, learning, and learning to be your best? Are you leveraging your resources and are you yanking opportunities? Are you really ready for this thing we call government contract? all I got for this video. I want you to go back and watch some of my other videos and I'm going to see you guys in the next video. Until next time.